Good afternoon, ladies, good, good afternoon, gentlemen, and happy to welcome all of you on our class. And of course, good afternoon, Alexander. Today we have a special session. Today we have uh, the last uh, webinar with Alexander this year, and we also decided to make it as an annual event. Uh, so we have, let's say, a slightly new format. So we will do a summary of a new, uh, of current year, like 2023, uh, till we have, let's say, 10, 11 days ahead of ending, let's say, 2023, and we will speak out loud about 2024. Of course, before uh, we start, as usual, I will say some words about uh, uh, risks. Every time it is important to understand that trading investing is connected to risks and uh, we all need to understand how market works and uh, to analyze them before doing say, any actions on the market. So please be attention to risks, uh, even uh, if you trade or invest. So it's important thing to pay attention for. Uh, for today's, so we will do a, a small company overview, let's say for 2023, uh, for uh, plans for the next year. And I think here uh, we also can, uh, I will uh, also say that today we have uh, Alexander uh, as our regular guest. Each month we uh, meet uh, with him to discuss uh, markets and uh, to uh, analyze uh, current uh, situation. So I'll pass the word to him in a few moments. I would like to say that uh, for us 2023 was challenging for a company as well. And uh, however, we made uh, uh, a lot of improvements we made let's say new uh we launched a new platform for our uh, traders uh we uh, make let's say after invest option where we you can set up let's say different uh period of after investing i would say two different stocks and etfs uh, also we added new uh currencies we added let's say fractional shares uh and etfs so to uh, in, uh improve uh, user experience for our uh, investors uh, also, uh, we had uh, different. We got different awards in Germany, in Spain. Uh, we launched, let's say, different educational programs. We had uh, 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 classes with Alexander, of course. Let's say during the whole 2023, uh, we also had a new a series of interviews with uh, different traders like uh, Mr. Nissan, Bollinger, which uh, you all can find, let's say, on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and also, we. Uh, work on our uh, uh, with our coverage so we are aiming to be a financial hub so we got different licenses for 2023 uh, we got license in canada uh, in south africa and uh, we uh, uh, conquer let's say different uh, uh, places let's say to be presented there as a regu uh, regu uh, regulatory uh, company uh, we're also improving our learn approach. So we started, let's say, new uh, webinars, new uh, uh, classes, and also we prepare for you, uh, for our clients, a new tool for MT4 and MT5 platform, uh, which might help to increase uh, the experience for analysis directly in your uh, platform. So uh, stay tuned to hear, let's say, this news. Uh, also, of course, to say some words about trade. So we have a big amount of uh, instruments which we offer to our, our clients together with uh, stocks, uh, currencies, commodities, and different ones. Uh, we allow to trade in MT4, MT5 platform. We also have a web trader. We we'll launch, let's say, our native admirals platform. And of course, we have a mobile app. Together with these, we have uh, supportive tools which help to increase experience of our clients, such as uh, VPS service, uh, Parallels, the tool which allows to use MT4 and MT5 platform uh, for Mac users. We have a Stereo Trader, Supreme Edition, and uh, many, many uh, uh, other things. I'm trying just to say and highlight the most uh, important, but of course, it was uh, a lot. For invest, we also added additional stocks. We added, as I said, let's say fractional uh, investing for uh, ETFs and shares, and uh, also our investing opportunities uh, available for our MT5 uh, uh, on our MT5 platform, and also in mobile app and Admirals platform. So uh, it's also uh, important to understand that uh, for 2024, we also have plans. We'll keep 
posting it. We will keep you informed about our plans for 2024. Uh, but also, uh, we are planning to launch with a new educational program. So we are planning to increase, uh, as I said, our experience through analytical uh, tools to our clients. And of course, we also have some uh, new features for classes uh, with uh, Alexander. Uh, so for today, we want, would like to make a retrospective for 2023 and to speak about uh, 2024. As usually, uh, like previously and normally during our class, I do it, let's say, for one month. But here I decided to make it, say, for the whole year because I think it's quite interesting. And actually, it's uh, really awesome that we have, let's say, today's class. I mean, like uh, today, because uh, I hope... I had expectations that S&P 500 could make a new all-time high, but at least Nasdaq made. But maybe uh, it's it's not the evening, right? So it's uh, almost noon, Alexander, but we, we still have time for this. Uh, but uh, in general, we see that uh, market was uh, uh, performing good. So we are uh, on S&P 500, we are almost near the all-time high. And uh, here we also see the performance of uh, different uh, companies. So we see that biggest part of them are closing the year on a, a green uh, zone. Uh, the same situation we see uh, on the NASDAQ stock. So biggest uh, companies are also performing quite good. And different companies uh, show uh, tens and hundreds of percent of their movement, let's say, for the past uh, year. Here, it's also interesting that, uh, like here, I choose um, ETFs, like to represent indices. So S&P made, let's say, around 23%. Uh, like, of course, we, we saw a, a correction, let's say, during 2023, but we are, uh, as I said, almost nearby uh, the all-time uh, high. Uh, what I want to say, let's say for like, what is summary for me, let's say for 2023, of course, it was a year uh, with, uh, fighting uh, with inflation. I mean, a Federal Reserve System tried to fight with inflation and they pretty much succeeded. So we can assume that it's uh, like this because uh, inflation uh, fall and we see it on uh, already much more lower than it was, of course, in 2021. And uh, we had a uh, Fed uh, meeting, and here I also decided to illustrate at least, uh, let's say, my summer, let's say, for 2023, uh, uh, before passing um, uh, microphone to Alexander, that after the last uh, Fed meeting, we see that, so here I presented a screenshot from we uh, Fed Watch tool, so it's... Uh, uh, speculation, I would say, uh, on the probability of a Federal Reserve System to hike or to change or to ease uh, the uh, rate. And here we see that uh, for 2024, so the possibility of hiking is almost zero. So we see that uh, probably no change, they will keep the uh, possibility of no changing for uh, next two, three months, like the first quarter. But after this, there is a huge probability that they will start uh, 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 decreasing their uh, rate. And uh, that's uh, interesting because it will can be, let's say, new fuel and it will be, let's say, fuel uh, for the market. Of course, if it will be uh, no more uh, black swans, which we also know can happen. Uh, but uh, that was, let's say, from, uh, let's say, my side. Alexander, uh, I said everything which I planned. So now I'm ready to give microphone to you thank you thank you very much roman i'm looking at this uh it's, it's always a pleasure working with you uh and as i said earlier drinking a tea from you from the admiral's cup um i'm looking at this table you have on the screen right now and um uh, it's very impressive uh nobody expects a hike zero percent expectation uh and uh, uh almost nobody expects uh, a cut in January, but then uh, once we get to March, everybody expects, uh, almost everybody expects a cut. Uh, it looks wonderfully bullish, but uh, I want to add one thing to it. Interest, uh, inflation and interest rates is not the only factor that drives the markets. And market always finds uh, something to worry about and something to focus, uh, to focus on. Um, so the inflation is now out of the way as a war and market is celebrating. Uh, what happens next? Black Swan, of course, is always a danger. 
but uh, but the underlying the the, the underlying uh, but you know black swan I'm thinking I remember 9/11 in New York now that was a that was a black swan and the market fell uh, and fell badly and uh, I had a class scheduled for a month later and um, uh, I stopped trading after 9/11 I was just too upset about it. I, I was living in Manhattan I was at the time I was uh, too upset about the whole thing it was really a crazy time. But before the class, I had to find something, and I found a whole lot of bullish trades. And uh, I bought them, I showed them in class, and by the end of the year, it was very profitable. Uh, so uh, this this black swan events, they interrupt trends, but they, but they very seldom change them. So a black swan will drop the market, but then the market will continue its previous trend. So if it was rising, uh, it's, it's likely will continue to rise. However, the market has plenty to worry about. You know, black swan can happen any day in this world. But uh, uh, but what uh, the market, I think, will be worried now and what really we have to, to, to pay attention to is the uh, possibility of a recession in the United States. Um, the uh, employment situation is becoming a little more difficult uh, 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 there are fewer jobs openings, uh, 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 fewer fewer salary increases. So uh, remains to be seen. Maybe maybe the country will survive this uh, this episode of uh, interest high interest rates, and maybe not. Uh, but but certainly there will be plenty to worry about and pay attention to. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Roman asked me to review. Uh, can you show maybe the first slide, Roman, if you don't mind, uh, uh, which, which actually shows the picture of uh, uh, of Admiral's uh, website? Uh, uh, actually, oh, I slightly nice slightly changed it. Okay. Uh, okay. I so that, that that's okay. We're not essential. Um, uh, Admiral's has a nice website. So when I was preparing this PowerPoint. Uh, I grabbed the front page from <laughs> from uh, uh, from Admirals. Uh, it has this uh, uh, quote screen on a on a cell phone with with stickers around. So I looked at what those stickers did, uh, and um, uh, uh, this is the. So we will look at the weekly charts of some of the key markets. So this is the Dow Jones, and I really looked here for uh, just a few things. Um, I looked at the trend of a slow moving average. On all my charts, uh, I like to put two moving averages, uh, the fast one and the slow one. The The slow one can be, it's, it's flexible, but the slow one uh, can be 26 bars. So on the week, on the uh, uh, weekly charts, 26 weeks. Uh, so that's uh, what about five trading days in a week. So it's about 100, uh, 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 130 uh, day moving average, uh, and I, and when it's rising, I put a green line here. When it's uh, when it's falling, I put a red line on, and so we see that most of the year the market was actually bullish. Uh, of course, it takes a lot more uh, to trade than uh, having a slow moving average, and I just uh, the red arrow by the way marks where the year began, and then I put a few. Uh, and then I was watching the indicators. And one of my uh, favorite indicators is uh, force index at the bottom of this chart. And uh, what I really look for there is extremes. Uh, force index shows the amount of volume thrown into the markets. So this little green dot, a gr green circle, you can see there was a real panic in the markets uh, in October. And people were selling uh, Dow stocks uh, just just wildly, and so uh, force index went outside of its uh, 3HR channel, and that's usually a sign of the end of the bearish move. What worries me, at the right edge of the screen, everybody, everybody and their grandmother are bullish now. Uh, I looked earlier this morning, uh, uh, there's a very smart guy in, uh, in Minnesota uh, who... By the way, there is. I, I don't know if he if he if he will agree to an interview, but if you decide to approach him, I'll I'll be happy to introduce him. 
uh, uh, this uh, this guy uh, Jason Gopford. Uh, uh, he has a he has a tool. He measures the bullishness among dumb money and bullishness among smart money. Uh, as of yesterday, the bullishness among dumb money was ninety six percent. Ninety six percent. The bullishness among smart money was thirty nine percent. And you can see using my tools, these extremes of um, uh, force index, you can see that at the right edge, there is a buying panic. What, what's going on in the markets is buying panic. And people are just afraid to miss this wonderful train that's going away from them. Except the train always pulls back and makes a stop, uh, returns to the station. So uh, my view of this chart, looking back and looking forward, it's bullish. But it's due for a pullback. Uh, this train is going. This train is approaching a station, which is great because that's uh, uh, if you miss the opportunity to load up on stocks, now is not a good time to do that because the market is running like crazy. It's above its three-year channel. Wait till it, it, wait till it pulls back to value, space between two moving averages. And if you look at history, it always does that. Let's go to the next slide. What will it be? Crude oil. Crude oil. Really the lifeblood of the economy. The, the first half of the year was bearish. The slow moving average was rising. Then we had uh, a nice but short bull market, which ended with one of, the, one of my favorite figures uh, and one of the important figures in the markets. It ended with a kangaroo tail, you see? Prices are in a tight weave, and then there is this uh, finger or kangaroo tail push, uh, pointing to the sky. And it shows that uh, there was this wild rally, and it attracted no volume, and so market began to reverse. Uh, and right now, we're in a bearish stage. Right now, we're again, the red arrow shows the beginning of 1922. So right now, we're in a bearish stage. The, the slow-moving average is falling. Fast-moving average is falling as well. But, 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 just a couple of weeks ago, we had a selling panic. A selling panic when everybody was dumping um, uh, futures contracts on crude and, uh, and also oil industry stocks. And I think this is now one of the most promising sectors of the market, uh, the, the the energy stocks, because while this whole craziness is going on and people are buying uh, high tech and uh, uh, mem stocks and everything, uh, it's the energy that's putting in a very meaningful bottom. We had a selling panic, and after selling panic, uh, it reminds me of my reminds me of my early days uh, when I was. Um, uh, studying psychiatry, actually, in Estonia, where where Roman now resides. Uh, and uh, I encountered my first manic depressive patients. Uh, one month they would be hospitalized with depression, trying to jump out the window, and they had to be held and tied to the bed so that they wouldn't jump. Uh, then they would recover, and a few months later, they would uh, the ambulance would arrive at the hospital again. Now they were in a manic episode, running around and bumping into walls. Well, that's how the market behaves, and I think this indicator, force index extreme, shows helps us identify manic and depressive episodes. Doesn't catch everyone, but when but it catches uh, important ones. By the way, uh, I did not circle, but here was a buying episode. And the market stopped for a month after that. And here was a buying episode and the uh, buying panic, I'm sorry. And the market topped out two weeks later. So conclusion, the uh, energy market is down, but building a bottom. Next slide, please. Uh, gold. Uh, gold was bullish for the first half of the year, just as uh, energy was, uh, oil was declining. Then there was a bearish episode. And notice how the bearish episode ended. Gold broke to a new year's low. It broke below, it broke below the February low. It also pushed the finger down, a kangaroo tail. And at the same time, there was a Selling panic. People were just dumping, 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 dumping gold. 
uh, and uh, two weeks later, the moving average turned up. And that's where we are today. The moving average is rising. We're in a bullish phase. There is, uh, there is one thing I don't like about this chart, and really one thing only. It's this kangaroo tail pointing up uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it's... Um, um, there was no there was no buying panic, so it wasn't like real sign of a reversal. Uh, and now the market now gold has pulled back to value last week and it's near value this week. And so I still have to classify gold as bullish, but it has to take out uh, its uh, uh, October high. I'm sorry, it's November high in order to December high. I'm sorry, it, it has to take out the December high to confirm a bullish trend. This uh, this double top, really, it, it's suspicious. It looks suspicious. So uh, uh, while I have stronger confidence in oil, I have low, I have confidence, but lower confidence in gold. It really has to prove itself. Uh, oil is behaving correctly. And uh, gold, uh, this, uh, this kangaroo tail uh, towards the sky uh, is worrisome. So... Let's let's pay attention to that top. Next slide, please. Euro USD. Uh, oh, uh, I forgot to put the lines here, uh, the arrows here. Uh, was uh, green uh, bullish uh, uh, in the first half of the year, uh, and then in August, by uh, look at the false breakout in July this last rally and look at the sell, look at the selling panic, uh, sorry, look at the buying panic. There was a buying panic. You see, this is a uh, selling panic. Uh, Roman is showing us was uh, in uh, May. And after the selling panic, gold rallied from, uh, I'm sorry, Euro rallied from 108 to uh, 114 almost. Uh, and then everybody started buying Euro. That's it, that's it. We're in a huge bull market. Euro is going to the sky. And people were buying it so heavily that uh, force index went outside of 3ATR channel. And it said, we're having a buying panic. And this is how rallies end. And that's how the rally ended. Uh, the euro had, uh, had a serious decline uh, in the fall. But then look at selling panics in September, October. And they marked the end uh, of the downtrend. Um, now, uh, in November, uh, there was a buying panic again, uh, and now the euro is completely flat. The moving average is rising, so we have to, I have to classify euro as bullish, uh, but it must uh, rally above the November top uh, to to confirm that it's uh, to confirm the uh, uptrend. Uh, if it stalls there, uh, uh, it, it means that uh, a new bearish trend is likely. Okay, so another thing I'd like to review with you uh, is this. Um, uh, there was an expression that became popular uh, uh, this year. They call it the Magnificent Seven. Uh, uh, the, the really young traders don't know uh, don't know the expression, but I see Roman is smiling. He, uh, Roman, you saw the movie, yeah? Yes, of course. Yeah. So, so anybody, I would say anybody who is over, I don't know, 30, 35, uh, has seen this uh, movie, the, the Magnificent Seven, about these cowboys. It's, it's an American cowboy movie. Uh, I saw it such a long time ago. But in any case, The Magnificent Seven. And these are the stocks that really uh, led the market higher in 2023. Uh, Apple, Amazon, Google, uh, Facebook, now Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. If we look at the charts, we can see that the Magnificent Seven is becoming tired. Uh, and uh, uh, would you like to, to go through those charts, Roman? Yes, let's do it. Let's, 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 let's do it somewhat quickly. Okay. Okay. Uh, Give me a second. Um, so I'm going to start from Apple. Yeah. Mm 
-hmm. Okay. So, uh, Apple. Uh, uh, those participants who've been with us before know that this is my uh, favorite setup uh, for the charts. For, for those who may be joining us for the first what time, <laughs> I don't know if you heard that I just got a fill. Uh, my phone just spoke to me and it said, order filled. I had some profit taking quarters there. Um, so uh, this is my, this is my uh, standard um, setup for the chart. Um, weekly, uh, I always want to look at two time frames, uh, weekly and daily, or 25 minutes and five minutes. Um, uh, you can do hourly and 10 minutes. So I always want to look at, at two time frames, which relate to one another approximately as five to one. So here we're looking at weekly and daily, strategic decision on the long-term chart, tactical decision on the short-term chart. So looking at Apple computer now, uh, you can, uh, Roman, if you can, can you please put just a, a vertical line at the start of 2023 uh, on the weekly chart? Uh, a little bit to the right, yeah. Somewhere here. I mean, Ab Apple, the Magnificent Seven, I don't remember the exact number, but I think the Magnificent Seven as a group uh, gained about double what the market gained. So these stocks really created the bull market. And you can see it was a wonderful thing to trade. What do we see in Apple now? I say Apple screams, not speaks, screams danger. Uh, last week, Apple broke out to a new record high on the weekly chart. Compare the readings of a MACD histogram. Uh, the, this huge hump earlier in the year break below zero, breaking the back uh, to the right, uh, uh, breaking the back of the bull. And now MACD histogram is up again. Compare, compare the height of MACD histogram early in the year and now. Compare the height of MACD lines in the middle of the year and now. Compare the height of force index in the middle of the year and now. These are screaming, screaming, screaming bearish divergences. The only thing that prevents me from running out and selling it short today is uh, uh, that um, the impulse system is still green as soon as it changes. And uh, uh, if I, uh, well, uh, um, uh, as soon as it changes from green to blue, uh, uh, selling will be, shorting will become, I mean, the time to sell Apple is now. You will be able to buy it back much cheaper. I mean, the, Apple is not going away. It's a major company. It will be a buy again. But Apple has a history of 50% declines, 50% declines. You want to sit through a 50% decline? You know, what you're most likely to do it declines 50% and you're disgusted and you sell out at the bottom. That's what most people do. So the time to take profits is now and then watch it. Look, look forward to buy it at a discount. Looking at the daily chart, uh, uh, the impulse system is already blue, legal to short. Compare, compare the height of a MACD histogram in November and now. I mean, this is a bearish diversions for the book, right? Apple, just, uh, it's it's rising. Uh, Apple is rallying today. Um, this thing is begging to be shorted, begging. Making a note to myself. Uh, I haven't looked at it too closely lately, uh, but I'm making a note to myself after the class is out, start preparing a plan for shorting. Uh, figure out you know when the impulse system will change color and that will be my trigger permission to go very very strong signal so apple next next victim uh amazon, amazon i think amazon we're looking looking at the weekly chart and uh uh, same thing uh, you see this red line that uh, uh, roman put in the chart uh, this is the start of 2023, right? And you can see that the bull market of this year 
that Amazon was a true, real leader of this market. And it's still making a new high now, uh, this week, and the impulse system is green. Um, it, uh, the message that I get from, uh, from Amazon, pay attention. It may give us a signal similar to Apple, but not yet. It's stronger than Apple. Uh, it, it broke out to a new high. Uh, it's not some little false breakout that Apple is tracing. Divergences are being created, but you know, divergences are secondary. Price is primary. So uh, in Apple, we saw a very clear double top uh, just being completed. Amazon is still rising. So uh, the train is moving. Uh, I don't want to stay in front of the train and say, oh, no, no, it's going to stop here and I'm going to stand. What if it doesn't stop? So uh, I'm cautious about this, uh, cautious about these de developing divergences, but I would not dare to sell Amazon short. Uh, if you have shares of Amazon, the only thing I would say, you really want to create, to, to, to put protective stops on it. And uh, this week's low should not be broken. Uh, if you're more conservative, previous week's high should not be broken. That's where I would put a firm stop. If that if that level is broken, that's probably uh, time to pause and look. Again, look for the ability to buy things cheaper. But at this point, it's still bullish. Next stock, please. Thank you, Alexander. Let's look at Google. Yeah. Uh, uh, Google woke up today. Uh, uh, you can see on the daily chart, actually, I always like to start with the weekly, but here show you the daily. Uh, I want to, uh, you see how flat and nothing and, and kind of downtrending it was on the daily chart. And today, suddenly somebody rang a bell. Uh, I was, I was surprised in the morning, uh, Google just popped up uh, and uh, it's rising on the weekly, on the weekly chart. Uh, it broke to a new high for the year today. Uh, uh, Impulse system has gone, it was blue, it returned It returned to green. Don't argue with the trend. It's still strong. It's still strong. Next chart. Let's look at Meta. Uh, yeah, Meta. I lost a little money on Meta last week. I thought, you see how the impulse system went blue, and I thought that they doubled... I saw the double top, a false breakout, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, I sold a small position of Meta short, and then it just uh, uh, by um, uh, 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 by Friday it started rallying, and uh, I didn't wait for what happens next. I took a small loss, and 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 closed it. Uh, on Monday, Meta exploded to a new high, and it's making a new high today. So, if you trade such stocks, you have to be, you have to have stops, and you have to watch them very closely, because uh, this is like hunting a lion. A wounded lion can be very, very dangerous. So, at this point, again, there is a potential on the weekly chart for a severe uh, bearish divergence, but it hasn't happened yet. And, uh, and and prices at a new high. So I would say uh, uh, Meta Facebook is uh, in a bullish trend on the weekly and on the daily chart. And uh, uh, it's, it's way too early to sell it short. Shorting is not allowed. If you have a position in Meta, I would put a stop at the level of the previous week's close. Because if it goes below previous week's close, it really, that's uh, that's where divergences are going to pop in heavy. Uh, but that's where I would have a stop. Again, the stock is trading way above value. And I think there will be an opportunity to, uh, to buy it cheaper. Thank you, Alexander. Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, the same, the same belt that rang for Google. Google suddenly woke up and rallied today. Uh, rang for Microsoft, uh, not quite as strongly. Um, uh, I have no idea why Microsoft is so flat, uh, but it's clearly lagging behind all the other Magnificent Seven. Um, 
the uh, uh, the impulse system turned uh, blue. It's a uh, it's a legal uh, short on the weekly, uh, but I would not be. I I'm not in I not inclined to short Microsoft. Why? Because even though there is a divergence on the weekly, it's uh, the price itself is trading well above the previous peak. So there is a real break. We're looking at a real upside breakout. Uh, the long-term chart is bullish, and uh, and until it takes out the uh, the uh, previous uh, previous peak, uh, and it was the summer peak, uh, I would be afraid to short Microsoft. Uh, if you have a long position in Microsoft, I would say the low of the previous three weeks. That's where I would put a stop there. That's where I would protect my position. You know, uh, Roman always speaks about, uh, Roman is very unusual uh, among uh, brokerage people that he always speaks about risk management, controlling risk. Uh, and uh, so I will just add a comment that I've, I've made many times before, but again, uh, for, for new people joining us today. How do I decide on the size of a trade? Uh, let's say, uh, well, uh, I begin every trade with uh, saying, how much am I prepared to lose? So let's say I am prepared to lose $1,000. That's my amount of risk. Then I will calculate what was the low three weeks ago. And what is the, so current price is 375, uh, I see on the screen. Uh, Roman, if you tell me what was the low three weeks ago, Give me a second. Take your time. It was 362.81. Okay. So uh, the price now is 375. Uh, and the and the and the three week low is 362. So we have thirteen dollars of risk per share, which is a lot. Uh, that's the uh, um, I would divide a thousand by thirteen. Uh, what I would get about seventy. That's how many shares I'm allowed to trade. So uh, uh, I call it the iron triangle of risk control. You take the number that you're prepared to risk and lose. Uh, you take the distance from your entry to your stop, and then you divide first by the second. And that's how you that's how you find how many shares you can reasonably trade. Next chart, please. Let's look at NVIDIA. Yeah. Ah, oh, NVIDIA. Uh, <laughs> I love shorting, and 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 shorting was my uh, uh, my big thing with NVIDIA this year. Obviously, I, again, NVIDIA was the leader of the bull market, uh, and uh, but it had very nice corrections uh, along the way, and uh, the crowd just was crazy about NVIDIA. So you can see from the start of the year, up, up, up in the way, uh, uh, a double top uh, in September and a serious break. And now uh, NVIDIA, uh, I think this week, it hit a new record low. Uh, the impulse system is green. But look at this, uh, look at these divergences that are forming, not confirmed yet. They will be confirmed when the impulse system stops being green and it stops being green when it becomes blue. But NVIDIA is in a very dangerous position here, I think. But uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bear on NVIDIA. Uh, look at uh, uh, bearish divergence from ACD lines, not ready, but, but can be triggered by a small decline. Look at the bearish divergence of MACD histogram. Not ready, but could be triggered by a small decline. And force index already completed a bearish divergence. We go to the daily chart, and we can see this double top between November and December peaks. And compare the heights of MACD histogram, MACD lines, force index. I mean, this thing just looks at me from the screen and says, Alex, are you awake? Are you awake? Are you watching me? because I'm gonna give you an opportunity. You just wait until the impulse system stops being green on the weekly chart. I'm adding it to my, uh, uh, to my list to, to, write trade, to, to, to write trade plans for. Uh, I wrote down Apple, now write down NVIDIA. Be ready. 
next chart or or we're done with seven i think tesla no oh. tesla tesla yeah yeah tesla um uh the next uh uh, te uh, uh tesla uh, tesla had its heyday in uh, 2022 that's when it really uh, tesla had a nice tesla had a very nice year in uh, 23 but it wasn't near it was not nearly as dramatic as previous years when tesla really was on fire uh, tesla went from from about 120 dollars to uh, almost 300 i mean it's a huge huge rise it's uh what it's about uh, over 200 percent uh but it's done better before uh tesla has been uh, in a trading range now since june nothing much is happening there uh, <coughs> uh people are people are concerned that maybe elon musk is too distracted by twitter uh um, uh, there are problems with selling tesla in china uh uh, there are uh, uh, there are, uh, lawsuits from the U.S. government uh, that uh, Tesla calls its self-driving system autopilot. Well, it's not autopilot. It's just it's really a deceptive name. It's a system, <clears throat> assistive pilot, but uh, second pilot. <laughs> it's not autopilot, and uh, uh, there have been several crashes. Uh, so. Uh, uh, issues issues but tesla is very much alive and um uh, and um uh, uh, a year ago uh, i have a list of electric cars and a year ago the list had about 20 uh, tickers in it uh and and about a quarter of them have gone out of business tesla is really the only tesla is the main game in town when it comes to electric uh, to electric vehicles so it's certainly way too early to sell tesla short uh, it's in a trading range. Uh, depends on what you think about the market. Uh, I think that the market is getting ready for a uh, for a pause, for a pullback, for a rest after this great rally. And Tesla may very well become an attractive buy. I certainly don't see a shorting opportunity in Tesla. I mean, if I was forced to short, no, I don't. Not, not even if forced, I don't see a shorting opportunity in Tesla. Uh, Apple, Nvidia uh a couple of others but uh but, but tesla and by the way the second list uh the second list that roman is about to show you uh it's a list from goldman sachs um that uh, uh successful company intelligent company uh goldman sachs came came out with a list uh, uh about which it said these are the future uh candidates for the magnificent seven uh uh, two columns the third column actually is something different it's uh, the third column uh, it's uh, computer security this came from a different source came 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 from one of my colleagues uh, but uh, uh, but let's take a look at so so the column that begins with uh, bkng is goldman sachs the second column the third column is uh, is not goldman sachs just Credit, credit should be given where credit is due. Let's take a look at a few stocks. Uh, Tesla here, I think. Uh, what? I, have a look. I, I open it's INTU, uh, into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 it's uh, um, uh, 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 into it. It's a, it's a, it's a personal finance, uh, personal finance stock. Um, uh, very popular in the U.S. Uh, uh, <laughs> the guy who created the company a long time ago, maybe 30 years ago, uh, how did he test the initial uh, version of the software? Uh, he uh, he invited uh, um, uh, sort of aristocratic women to try the software because he felt they don't know anything about software. They're intelligent, but they're not knowledgeable. So if you can, if 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 they can run the software, other people can run it. In any case, a very popular software in America. Um, now, uh, looking uh, at the weekly chart uh, on the left, uh, we see a tremendous rally. 
And this rally is actually in a dangerous spot right now. This rally is outside of the 3ATR channel. The uh, 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 Intuit is manic. Uh, and uh, an ambulance pulling up to a psychiatric hospital and, and the manic patient is being taken out of it. Uh, but uh, uh, I certainly would not buy it today. But uh, look at the indicators. MACD lines are holding up well on the weekly charts. MACD histogram just made a new high. This is a very strong stock. So what do we do? We wait. We wait until it comes back to value, until it comes back into the space between the two moving averages. And that, that, that should be a very attractive buy. Um, by the way, uh, on the right, the daily chart, and uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, uh, approaching bearish diversions there. No diversions yet because the impulse system is green and it hasn't uh, the, the MACD histogram hasn't ticked down. But uh, but what uh, and and a beginner can jump at this. Oh, diversions is being built. Well, not quite. I always look at what was the depth of the decline between the two peaks of a MACD histogram. You see, two, MAC, two last MACD histogram peaks, one in November, one in December. Look at the decline between them was nothing. So it shows that there is really no, no bearish power there. So this is, this is one of the candidates from Goldman Sachs for the next, for the next uh, Magnificent Seven. Buy and pull back. Buy and pull back. Not today. Another one is Enphase Energy. Uh, ENPH, yeah. This is, it's a solar, it's an American company that, uh, uh, that uh, invests in solar power. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly how they do it, probably building things. Uh, uh, I like buying value. I like buying things uh, that uh, uh, that are cheap as opposed to things that are uh, expensive. And you can see that on the weekly chart, ENPH was trending lower and lower and lower all of this year. It declined uh, uh, it declined from about uh, two hundred seventy five dollars to 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 seventy five approximately, right? so so it lost it lost about three quarters of its value, but it's the major solar company in the US. Um, it uh, it made this uh, look when it made its final bottom on the weekly chart near the right edge. Right, the final bottom. Look at the depth of a MACD histogram. Nothing. Look at the depth of force index. Nothing. So basically, all the selling was done. The stock has reversed, and uh, looking uh, looking at the weekly chart now, this this is a very promising stock. Uh, uh, the industry is hot. Uh, the stock is not going. It, it's it's not going away. And this 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 stock is at the center of this industry. We're looking at the daily chart on the right, and it's a little crazy. It's manic. It's above the upper channel line, uh, and the whole market is manic today. So uh, there will be a buying opportunity, and I think uh, uh, not today, but but this stock definitely definitely ought to be remembered. And again, I've said it before, I'll say it briefly again today. What's the best way to remember? Print out this chart and mark, mark on it with a, with a red pen. What do you expect it to do? Where you will buy it? Are you going to be uh, uh, buying like, like a manic patient at 134, where it is now? Or will you try to buy it somewhere close to $110, or so maybe cheaper than 110 on a pullback? That's the, uh, trade uh, trade like a housewife. Housewife goes shopping, and let's say, and every uh, once a week, uh, she buys, uh, uh, among other things, she buys tuna fish, uh, no, uh, one can, two dollars. One day, one day she comes to the supermarket, uh, and it says, "This week's special: a can for a dollar." Do you think that she will buy same number as always, or she'll buy more? We'll buy more because it's on sale. Wait until wait until uh, ENPH goes on sale, which it will, like everybody else. Thank you, Alexander. And uh, another stock from solar industry is 
uh, solar edge yeah SEDG. it's uh, actually it's it's a uh, it's an israeli company and you see this very very uh, long bar pointing down uh, no near the right edge october 7th that's when israel was attacked uh, and uh, and the company uh, the company uh, got hit uh, 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 i bought it uh, a few days later i actually caught the low in this thing and then i sold it too early um, but this is uh, this company is in the same business as ENPH, uh, uh, and even though it's an Israeli company, it's listed in the U.S. and it's one of the leading companies in the solar industry. Similar to ENPH, you can see how there was a serious bear market. Uh, it went from about three hundred fifty dollars uh, to about uh, hundred and ten dollars, and then of course the uh, the October disaster pushed it down. Now it's coming back very nicely. Um, looking at the looking at the daily chart, yeah, this gap you see a major gap in the daily chart. Uh, that was early October. That was the attack. Uh, uh, the company survived very well, and uh, it uh, it resumed it resumed its rally. Same suggestion as with ENPH. Uh, no rush to buy near the upper channel line, uh, but there will be a very nice buying opportunity when this stock inevitably. Uh, pulls back to its uh, value zone. That's that's the place to go shopping. That's that's your a kind of tuna for a dollar instead of a kind of tuna for two dollars. Yes. The next one is C D and F. Uh, American computer uh, company, and just another example of something that's very strong. Uh, uh, it, it's in a hot industry. It's very strong. But looking at the weekly chart, it's 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 scratching against the uh, upper channel line. But you can see that throughout its rally in 2023, every few months, there would be a little panic and a pullback to value, and that's and that's the time to go shopping. If we turn to the daily chart, it actually looks dangerous. It looks like a double top with with, with a whole set of bearish divergences on the daily chart. MACD lines, MACD histogram. Force index all show bearish divergences. It actually looks like a short, and lots of those stocks do. Um, again, remember what I said before, uh, uh, earlier today. Um, among uh, uh, among uh, what my uh, friend calls dumb money, inexperienced, not knowledgeable, ninety six percent are bullish. Among smart money, thirty nine percent are bullish. So this is right now is a very dangerous time in the market uh, because the mania uh, we're in a market mania right now. Of course, everybody is happy about the. the we've, it looks like we finally hit the top of the interest rate uh, thing. Uh, but um, what's the next problem? I'm sure there will be. So be very so. So this is another stock that if if you have it, be sure to protect it with a stop. If you're interested in it, look to buy in the value zone in the weekly. Uh, you will be able. You know, we, we don't have time to go through the entire list, uh, and there is of course no guarantee that all of the stocks will be angels uh, or magnificent uh, anything. But 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 chances are that you that many of them will be on the winners list uh, in the year to come. It's it's a good. I call it, it's it's it, it's a good pond to go fishing in. Thank you, Alexander. And yeah, I will add. So just uh, you can uh, do a homework on your own with with, this, with those stocks and to understand uh, if it's uh, reasonable to go, let's say, to these stocks according to your risk appetite and uh, the positions of the stock on uh, market situation. Okay. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, I think we covered, uh, let's say, uh, core markets, like as a blend, we uh, spoke about stocks, which we also analyzed through 2023, let's say from current Magnificent 7, and we spoke about possible Magnificent 7 in 2024. Uh, and uh, I think the last but not least, uh, the thing which we have is to uh do one exercise with uh, looking for a competition and also we need your assistance dear participants during uh, this part so here uh we will do uh review of trades which our participants sent to our contest 
for rules about contest, I will say uh, a little bit later after the main part of this uh, event. And now I'm open, uh, let's say the first, uh, the first. So thank, thank you very much, Roman. So uh, for our participants, um, in the past, we were just announced, you know, this was this was this trade, this was that trade. Uh, now here, uh, uh, I decided to make it more interactive. I will show you, uh, together with Roman, entries into two trades. And I will ask you for each of those trades to vote. You think this trade will make money or this trade will not make money? I don't quite know how the voting process works, uh, but Roman, you will you will maybe explain that. Uh, yeah, so for here, uh, for that uh, exercise, for dear participants, if you think that this uh, trade will be profitable, uh, uh, please type yes in chat. If it will be not profitable, type no in chat. And here I will uh, try to count. So uh, here you see entry. So uh, we are not shown, say, the instruments so far. So it's, it says usual right. weekly da daily chart. Right. And uh, yeah, so just. So I removed, uh, uh, I removed, uh, I prepared this chart by covering up the ticker. So you don't, uh, I, I don't want you to know where the chart is, right? So uh, just look at, look at the chart. The weekly is on the left, the daily is on the right, a MACD histogram in the middle, force index underneath, right? So at the right edge of this chart, and the right edge shows November 27th, uh, the participant, uh, uh, one of our participants submitted this trade as a pick, and he said, uh, go to the daily chart. The green level, the green level is where he wants to buy it. The red level is where he's going to put a stop. And the blue level is his uh, profit target. So the question is, uh, what do you think? Quick, uh, do you think this trade, so the trade was entered on November 27th. Do you think this trade will make money or lose money? Yes or no? Uh, Give you ten, 10 seconds. Yes, yes, yes. We have one no. We have two no's. Uh... We'll, we'll, we'll count it. We'll, we'll, we'll get results later. So, <laughs> so trade number one. Uh, you should also, uh, I will be asking you about the second trade. And when I ask you about the second trade, please say trade, uh, say number two, yes or no, right? Number two. So, so, we, so we don't mix up the two. They're completely different trades. I think it can be tricky because when I click, let's say, to the next, so our participants can recognize the about uh, first position. They shouldn't be because I gave you four tickers in a row. Uh, I, I gave you two entries followed by two exits. Okay, I have a, on the next slide the correct answer, so I should click well, quite then, fast. Then you put my you you put my slides in in your own order, which was uh, uh, uh -huh. I, I did it on purpose this way, and I colored them differently. Uh, if you can maybe skip one, just go quick, quick, because you want to go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. okay. Trade number Good. two, and uh, this is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first time Roman and I are doing this, right? In this form. It takes a lot of work, by the way. We do, oh, we're doing it for the, oh, <laughs> we're doing it for the first time. And so so we're learning as we go. Uh, I forgot to add arrows, Roman, uh, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, but the point is, this, this, this is, I think, is a good way to learn. And this is the first time we're doing it. And we plan to do it again. So second time will be smoother. Third time will be even more So here's another trade that another participant submitted uh trade number two entry buy to uh, and and this is uh november 30th right uh, almost three weeks ago buy today uh and uh so the weekly chart is on the left the daily chart is on the right the green arrow shows he is buying now that's where he is buying he, on that same day right he is not giving you an order for the future he is buying there Red uh, uh, red mark is uh, where he, his stop goes, and blue mark is uh, is what's his target. Very very ambitious target. Um, so uh, please type two number two and then dash yes or two dash no. Ten seconds. One two three. It's it's already uh, yeah it's it's already coming. Okay. And then, okay, and then, no. uh, 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 
you calculated the number for the first uh, one? Uh, let me just, so for the first one, it was, uh, I would say it was more yes. Yeah. And for a second one, so just give me a second. Till our participants are typing. One, five, six, nine. So it's around 15 no, and let's say four yes for a second option. Very and, good. And no, so Very... keep, keep following. Uh, Roman, uh, you may want to check with Zoom uh, because I think they do have actually yes. uh, a version. So uh, more work for you, not only. For yes, you. I will do. I will do. We may do. But I think this. this will be a very useful thing and really engages our participants. Okay, so let's let's back let let's go back one and see the answer to trade one exit for the trade one. So we're going back. So trade one. Uh, the, the stock that that participant was buying was uh, Mobil, XOM, Exxon Mobil. Uh, on the daily chart, uh, it shows the arrow when he gave his, uh, when he submitted his pick. So he was really uh, 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 he, uh, right, uh, he submitted his pick. He got the stock. His stop was never touched, and um, uh, and a profit, a profit target hasn't been reached either. So the trade the trade would still be uh, the trade would still be open. Uh, I uh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Um, so he uh, uh, he bought on a false break. Uh, on a false break below the previous low uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, this the stock declined but but not to his stop and uh, continues profitable profitable trade let's take a look at the now let's go forward two steps and see what's happened to trade number two uh, trade number two, where most of our group were saying was not going to work, uh, the majority was right. This is the market. I, uh, I, I know so many people who lost so much money in this market, UNG, natural gas. Uh, uh, I know a guy who lost, who lost $2 million and became suicidal uh, by natural gas. Uh, it's uh, the problem is this: when you talk about uh, crude oil, when you talk about uh, uh, you know buying or selling oil, supplies of crude are limited. Right? So you have OPEC, which can increase supplies or decrease supplies, you know, playing their uh, playing their business. The supplies of natural gas worldwide are unlimited. There is as much natural gas as you want. All you have to do is drill uh, uh, and uh, uh, deep enough and, uh, and 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 you get as much natural gas as possible. And so natural gas is essentially in a perpetual bear market because there is more and more and more of it developed. Uh, and of course, there are bullish diversions along the way. And everybody says, wow, we have a bullish diversion. It's cheap. And buy it, well, uh, six months later, it's much cheaper. Three months later, or tomorrow, it's much cheaper. So uh, th this, is, this is one game that I, I highly recommend you avoid, buying natural gas. Uh, basically, uh, in terms of drilling. Uh, 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 oil, so as you drill, go down uh, into the earth. For every kilometer you drill down, temperature rises 25 degrees Celsius. So the deeper you drill, the hotter it becomes. So oil, so up on the surface, you have coal uh, uh, and shale. Uh, you drill deeper and you get crude oil. And crude oil requires not only depth, but it also requires there has to be stone that will hold oil like in a, in a, in a cup. Yep. But if you drill deeper and it's 
too hot. It's so it gets so hot that there is no more liquid there. It's only gas, natural gas. So drill and get natural gas. Don't don't buy it. <laughs> so thank you, Alexander. I think it was uh, now when we made let's say one first round of this uh, contest, uh, like with this approach you offered, I think it will be really engaging. So for the next one, uh, I will not shuffle, let's say in wrong order. So just not to... Uh, we, we both will be more <laughs> careful. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I, remember, uh, I remember an old saying, when you first start making pancakes, the first one looking comes out looking like a dumpling. <laughs> yeah true so but uh, uh but this is uh, the, the this is the innovation that uh, we prepared for the new year and uh, and uh, so uh in conclusion i want to wish all our uh, you roman uh, and all our participants uh, happy holidays merry christmas successful new year and uh, and I'm showing just a couple of photographs. Uh, one is uh, from uh, from my office window. Uh, snow in New Hampshire, and uh, in the second picture, I'm here with what I call my security team. You can see how serious they are. Bodyguards. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander. It was you. really exciting to have you through. Uh, because we uh, actually uh, meet already for uh, not for a first year and uh, the previous years was volatile and uh, we had a uh, uh, chance to hear your opinion about markets so sometimes it was uh, quite scary let's say to look at markets and but your rational approach like you uh, as a, as a uh, trader's behavior so always uh you always had chance to explain to make it to make it rational so i uh, big thank you from my side and from those clients who uh, uh, probably who who sell us, who sent us a lot of emails a lot of comments so i also uh, want to say thank you from their behalf as well so thank, thank you me. alexander for uh, this uh, journey in 2023 and uh, we uh I uh, think that 2024 will be more uh, engaging, enjoying, uh, more insightful. We work on it. We definitely work on it. We don't do the same thing all the time. Uh, what you just saw with those uh, trade questionnaire, that's 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 our latest. Um, I'm, I'm sure that there are other features we will be adding. Thank you, Alexander. So uh, I also uh, wish you a uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and see you in uh, January. Looking forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Best, best wishes. And uh, dear participants, also, uh, as usual, before end, for our winner for uh, Exxon, uh, Exxon Mobile stock, so please contact me to... Uh, uh, I will... Uh, uh make a message on our youtube channel for contacting me uh, but also i want to say some words about uh instruments which we uh, have uh, which are available for admirals clients on mt5 platform and uh, those instruments are uh, alexander's indicators uh, which you just show when we make analysis on uh, metatrader uh, which are possible to get let's say uh, for free from um, admirals clients with a balance uh, on a real account with more than 200 euro on it. Uh, we offer this package to Admiral's clients and it's possible to get it uh, for free. So everything you need is to have a real account with 200 euro in, on it. And to receive this package, uh, you need to uh, submit a request with uh, to email elderdisk at admiralmarkets.com. I sent this email in a Zoom chat. And for those who are watching us on a YouTube channel, uh, it can be found on description to a video you are watching. And uh, with your request, uh, we sent you back indicators, chart templates, and video tutorial on how to install. And of course, uh, you will be able to practice your knowledge, practice your uh, trading during our classes, which we have, let's say, each month. And uh, last but not least, it's a contest which we have on our YouTube channel and uh, which approach of reviewing we presented you today. So uh, here is uh, the rules for the contest. 
So basically to participate in contest, we have it's actually on our YouTube channel, uh, the global one, uh, where we have a contest, uh, let's say on English uh, uh, language. And uh, basically there, it's possible to uh, participate on our uh, contest. So I'm sharing right now the link to our YouTube channel. And uh, actually for those who are watching us on the YouTube channel, if you are there, so we are on the correct place. And uh, here are the rules. So in comments, uh, after you subscribe to our channel, of course, and liked the video, uh, you suggest one trade for one asset that is traded in Admirals. And as I said before, we have more than 4,000 different instruments uh, and uh, you can pretty much find uh, everything uh, which is more or less uh, like which is had liquidity, uh, like currencies, uh, stocks, uh, indices, uh, commodities. So all instruments are pretty much available uh, on uh, for Admirals clients. Uh, and suggest one trade. It can be suggested due to your trading approach or due to approach uh, or with elements of Alexander's system. Uh, this is a paper trading. So you suggest a trade with instrument, entry price, stop loss level, take profit level, and date when you suggest to take this trade. Like uh, you uh, highlight the date. And we will analyze if this trade was executed like if it was actually happened, like order was executed. And then was it closed with a take profit or stop loss during the whole month from one webinar to another. So next one we'll have uh, near the 24th of January. So we have almost a month between the trade. So uh, you can suggest one trade and if it will be executed by take profit, so it can last, let's say, uh, two days, three days, one week, one month, uh, we make a preferences to those trades, uh, which closed, we uh, take profit. Uh, and uh, uh, here we uh, will choose a, a winner. So it's also prohibited to edit a comments. Uh, I see also a question about the uh, uh, winner for a previous uh, uh, months. I think if we are not mentioned, so uh, please uh, text me to uh, roman.isakov uh, at admiralmarkets.com. So I will double check for sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, we uh, normally we uh, highlighted, let's say all positions and let's say all uh, winners. But if you have any questions, you or other participants, so please do so and contact me uh, directly. I will just type uh, my email address for any questions, any suggestions. And uh, yeah, of course. So here. Uh, so that's pretty much it for today. So uh, basically, if you will have any questions, you can contact us as usual. And as we made, let's say this as an annual event. So from my side and from Alexander's side, uh, I believe, so we wish all of you uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And also see you on a new uh, class, as let's say next year. And we, from behalf of Admiral's company, will keep uh, delivering, let's say, new products and new projects, which will help to uh, increase uh, experience of our uh, traders and investors. So thank you for being with us uh, on 2023. Uh, we keep uh, uh, working together on 2024. So thank you, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.